that shit sitting on my counter like a fruit bowl. It's like 100 racks. I like it. All right, Coffee. welcome back to another Music Mang podcast. And, you know, last week we started off with season two. Well, we've been doing a lot of interviews. We're back to podcasts of just the Music Mangs talking. We got an awesome, awesome topic today because we're talking about a very relevant, very, very relevant, awesome album, Tyler the Creator's new album, Call Me If You Get Lost. So we're here and the whole episode is based on that and we're all going to be discussing our thoughts on it. We're going down track by track, our thoughts, and then giving an idea of, you know, the overall work, what our thoughts are. So I'm here today with it's Austin. We got uh, Sean, Jeremy, Brad, Brendan, and a special guest. You heard him in last season, Biz. We got heads in this place so it's gonna be an exciting episode bam let's go <laughs> let's go so starting off the album we got sir boulder or bold boulder however you want to pronounce it Baudelaire. featuring very surprising guest who made his way throughout the rest of the album dj drama how we feel about that one all right I- i'm just gonna say first off it was fantastic to hear that because I just like I think of like some of the old gangster grills and even like I mean I'm not super into the old type of rap but like Stone Mountain by Charles Gambino is more of my vibe and that whole album is hosted by uh, DJ Drama and I absolutely love that like well I guess it's a mixtape and hearing uh, DJ Drama in there I was like all right this feels this feels like it's it's definitely not the direction I expected from Tyler but I like it I like it yeah, I thought it was a very welcoming presence from DJ Drama. I mean, I saw a bunch of comments online saying that they were bothered by it, but I didn't really see the, um, I didn't really see it like that way. Yeah, so many people thought it was like obnoxious or something, but honestly, it just sounds good. Like it's it's the it's the hyphy that you need, and like you know, like Tyler makes mellow music now. He's been chilling out for the past little while. But like this album, like you needed something to like bump the energy up, and DJ Drama is so good for that. Yeah, I think when it comes to producer tags and stuff, like I think DJ Drama hit the right uh, points of every song. He wasn't overbearing with it. I think he, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes they can be kind of annoying, but I feel like he he added rather than talked over the beat. He actually added to the song as a whole. I agree with that 100%. I feel like going into the album, I tried not to listen to any of the um, like singles or teasers that he put out just because, you know, listening to a Tyler album, I want to hear it in its entirety at the first time I'm listening to it. And obviously his last two albums were a lot more um, mellow, kind of steering away from rap. So hearing that intro track and hearing DJ drama, it's like, okay, you you know what's up for this album. It's going to be different. It's going to be going back to rap. So I thought that that was an awesome introduction to the album, having DJ drama on there. And then throughout the album, I thought that he added a lot too, especially on uh, that one track with Lil Wayne, Hot Wind Blows, where he's talking about being in Geneva, Switzerland. And it's just, it just sets it up perfectly. And I mean, I know that it could be annoying if executed poorly, but it was just the perfect amount of DJ drama, perfect amount of shit talking. I, I thought it was perfect. It was just like nice comedy. Like, honestly, it was like, you, you laugh a little bit when he came on, but it was good. You didn't laugh because it was bad. You laughed because it was like, it's weird and funny, but like, I like it. We got our toes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got our toes out. <laughs> like, this is so funny. I, I could have stopped laughing, but I was like, this is so fire. Even though it sounds so weird and like, wow. And then... um from that intro track, we transition into Corso, which, I mean, has those blaring horns, and it's just a really just hard-hitting song. Um, I really like that song. It was one of my favorites from the album. Um, what are some of you guys thinking about that? Wait, was that? I'm, I'm like already forgetting. Wasn't, wasn't Lemonhead the one with the horns? Yeah. Was it? What's the it was one. Oh, shit. Okay, that's that's what that was the one with uh, Forty Two Doug. Corso was yeah. was a lot more. I felt like for me, Sir Baudelaire and Corso kind of blend in my mind because I felt like the transition was just very smooth into it. Whenever I was listening to it, I was just like, I didn't tell that there was a break. Like, I mean, a lot of these songs, like the transitions in this whole album in general, were very very solid. But those two songs were hard for me to distinguish from each other, and it just to me. I don't know that that song. I didn't have anything like crazy 
to think about it. It didn't stand out anything to me. Um, it was a good, solid track, but nothing more than that, really. Yeah, I think Corso was pretty nice as, like, the bass started to kick in. I was sort of getting the idea that, wow, I think I can expect more bangers from this album as I continue to listen. Yeah, when I first heard it, I, I kind of thought, okay, he really is going for a rap album on this one completely. And I thought Corso actually set the tone for um, a lot of the album was kind of dealing with, not necessarily thematically, but, like, uh, sonically. I, I felt like uh, you could really tell that he was going for, like, a luxurious, like um, vibe with the whole thing. I know DJ Drama, we talked about the toes in Geneva, Switzerland already, but it really feels like when you're listening to this thing that you are like somewhere around the world just living a life of luxury and uh, success. And that's kind of what he talks about later. And that's just a good feeling that uh, Corso starts out with portraying uh, Tyler's story and thought process. Yeah, like he he starts to bring in the idea that this is this is gangster rap album, like this is this is braggadocious, because like he pulls in and he he raps like he rapped on in like Wolf Air, like off Future Era, and like the beat is starting to in the the beat isn't like old Kylie yet, but it's starting to pull back a little bit, like it's getting back more hip hop, less melodic type thing. So I think it was just such a good bridge, and I think this is like just as much an intro as Sir Baudelaire is. Like, Sir Baudelaire, yeah, sure, it, it, it intros the concepts. You intro the fact that DJ Drum was going to tag in the song all throughout. And like, oh, 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 oh. like, okay, this is what we're doing. Okay. Brad, you got any thoughts? I want to hear some from, from Brad. I'm honestly, I, I don't really have any thoughts on the first two. I think I also thought they blended together. They were both kind of an, an introduction. Um, and as I continue to go back, it would, they weren't really ones that I went back to. Yeah, I even agree with that. But still, like, when we're talking about, like, getting the vibe, the the thing that I was, like, thinking about was, like, this is a rap album. And I already had already set the tone that it's a rap album back to, like, the, the Wolf days and things like that. But it's a lot more mature, right? Like, Tyler was so, like, just shock rap. And even on Wolf, it was, like, he was moving away from it, but it was a lot of shock rap. This was, like, Tyler in rap of, like, his new school where he was what he was going to and then all but back to the rap days so it was like very weird it wasn't like it was to me it wasn't like it was wolf it was just he was rapping but like not the same type of you know what his lyrics his lyrics weren't were the same on that they're they're not yeah braggadocious they're not going in and talking about all the horrible things he would talk about you know i i don't want to i don't want to say anything but for all I mean, the, all even for all the Tyler fans that don't know about his old stuff, I don't want to spoil anything for him. Even beyond the lyrics, just the production is just so good. I mean, it's just so, it's just on a whole nother level. And I mean, people were talking about hearing, you know, 42 Doug, NBA Young Boy, and Lil Wayne on such great beats. I mean, Lil Wayne has rapped on great beats before, but I mean, NBA Young Boy kind of raps on the same beats all the time. <laughs> so it was really a breath of fresh air to have like, these artists who kind of are fed the same beats to have this kind of luxurious uh, production that Tyler is, you know, introducing throughout this album. Um, and then I think that we're kind of wrapping up on Corso and then transitioning into Lemonhead, which is the track that had those horns. The horns, and- man. <laughs> want to see a and- pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> you want to see a pandemic? Um, yeah. I mean, that's, I think that that's a standout song for a lot of people. Um, for me, definitely. I really liked, liked the production on it. I thought that Tyler kind of took a step back on that one. I wasn't too um, impressed by his like vocal presence on that, but 42 Doug was really cool, especially as someone who doesn't really listen to 42 Doug. I thought that it was really cool to hear him on uh, you know that kind of beat and really stand out. Yeah, this was my introduction to 42 Doug. I'd never heard a song with him on it before, but I was... Uh... I mean, the things that he appeared upon gave me an impression that it wasn't going to be uh, good, but uh, he proved me wrong, and I think he added a good presence to the track. Um, but, uh, you know, it made me interested in checking out more of his stuff, and I don't know, maybe it's not as good as this, but I, I, he at least gave a good enough performance for me to you know, try it out. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. One of, one of my favorite songs from this year, actually, is this um, collab with Roddy Rich which has this really cool sample from the Scorpions. Um, 
So yeah, I think it really depends on the production because I also wouldn't listen to a lot of his stuff. I'm just gonna say 42 Doug washed Tyler on this one. I'm I'm just gonna straight up say it. I have only listened to We Paid. That's the only song I could tell you by him. And dude, hit, whenever whenever the drums came back in on, on his verse, I like I will blast that in the car. And I was like, I don't even like listen to this dude. This is not my style, but like him on this production just makes it so good. That's the thing too, is like like he actually he absolutely watched that Tyler the song. And I think Tyler's happy with that. Yeah. Like we saw we I think we saw that a lot on Flower Boy where the features were better than Tyler on like certain songs. Like you got like dropping seeds Lil Wayne on Flower Boy. I think like Lil Wayne's verse on that was beautiful. And like Tyler barely had a presence there. And that's just like it's cool. It's it's highlighting someone else, but like Tyler's making sure he's keeping full artistic control on it. Yeah, I think if anything, this has kind of shown that like he's willing to uh, be a Kanye like presence where he can take what other artists give him and kind of construct a song. And his his focus is not necessarily do I have the best verse, but it's like, how can I put these artists together in the right places to make the best song I can? And I mean, he sh he's shown that a lot on Igor, but I think even more he showed it on this one with all the features. Well then, if we're if we're talking about features, let's get to that next track. That next track, what's your name? NBA YoungBoy also washed him, in my opinion. NBA yeah, YoungBoy. That was beautiful. I never, I never thought that I would like a song that had NBA YoungBoy in it. Actually, okay, I do like "I Need It" by Migos, but <laughs> man, he, he was in his R and B feels. He was singing. I was like, holy crap, YoungBoy is killing it. Yeah, I had listened, yeah, I'd listened to the song snippet on Instagram and I had known that Ty Dollar Sign was in it. Yeah. But then when you know, I just kind of listened to it um, without even looking at anything. And I was really surprised that he did. I knew he was on it because I saw something. I didn't realize this was the song he was going to be on because this just has like such an R&B laid back vibe. And NBA Young Boy is someone that I have never enjoyed listening to before this, except for that one Migos song. It's I, I unlike 42 Doug, I knew this guy was not great. Now I have a good track record. And the fact that he showed up and killed it on this one, uh, it makes me, uh, you know, realize I should probably respect him a bit more. But also, like, I don't know, he contributed a lot to this song. Yeah, I think he has a solid voice. Like, or he has for a while, but it's just hard to get into him when he's so, you know, aggressive and his beats are all the same. Um but it's nice to hear him doing something different here. Yeah, Ty Dolla Sign didn't have much in the song other than background mostly, but like it really added a lot. I really, I, Ty Dolla Sign, he is the best feature out there. One, or not the best, but he's one of the best features out there and he never, he never misses on a feature. Solo stuff, well, that's a different story. But feature wise, I, man, that whole song is just beautiful. I mean, I think that's the standout track in my opinion from this whole album. It's the one that's going to hit his most streams it's going to be the most popular song uh, in my opinion I, I just can't see anything else beating this and it makes sense it is the best song in my opinion i can definitely I'm kind. oh sorry sean no go ahead brendan all you this is gonna be my most listened to song of the year i can already tell <laughs> i it hasn't hit me like that yet i mean i think with tyler's music sometimes you kind of have to let it marinate a little bit before you you know, realize what you like, but that one was kind of something in the middle for me, I think. Like, it wasn't a, like the worst song, but it definitely wasn't a standout for me. Um, but I did really like the NBA Youngboy feature. I thought that was cool. Yeah, speaking of most streams, I think there's a different song in this tra track list that's going to be my most listened to. Just for, mm. for the commercial aspect, this was the number one most listened to song on Friday oh, in, in, the whole, in the whole country. Dang. Yeah, I could see that. Like, More it seems Olivia like that, that's, wow. that's kind of surprising, actually. That's actually really surprising. It, this song a... beating pop, that's crazy. Yeah, I think it's a smart move to have Young Boy on this song. I mean, he's got a big fan base, whether uh, we like his music or not. So, you know, it, I think it gives him a good chance to, you know, uh, reach a wider audience. 
Dude, the YouTube streams are going to be off the charts. NBA Youngboy freaking dominates YouTube. <laughs> Those are his stomping grounds. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I think, think that I think Biz oh, froze. Yeah, Biz is having having some technical <laughs> issues. We'll we'll just keep it rolling. But um, how about Lumberjack? I thought that that was one of the more aggressive, hard, older Tyler um songs um i really did enjoy that one a lot what did you guys think about that one i think it was smart to put that specific track out because um when i first i remember when i first listened to it that i was expecting like oh wow he's going back to like the wolf era where he was just rapping upon rapping and um to me it wasn't one of the best tracks on the track list and honestly I like that for a single where it doesn't have to be the best song on the album. I agree with Jeremy. Like when I had first heard it, I was like, okay, this is pretty good. And I thought that was how the album was going to go. And now I've listened to the thing probably like five times now all the way through. And I have to say, it's one of my least favorite tracks. And because it was so good in the beginning and it's one of the ones I'm probably not even going to return to as much. I think that says a lot. Um, But I think uh, he. He brought some good uh, one-liners in there and made it entertaining, but uh, definitely uh, I think it was outshined by a lot of the other songs on this one. I actually really liked what it did in the middle of the album. Like, I guess not even the middle of the album, like what track four right now, track five, but it just like added so much crazy weird energy that like, you know, after What's Your Name, What's Your Name like toned everything down a lot. And then Lumberjack's like, oh no, but we are rapping. Like, let me just be clear. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I didn't even think about it that way. It is, it's a very, it's like night and day, honestly, and with when it comes to the album. Yeah, because you're also thinking about like, it's seamless transitions on Sir Baudelaire to Corso, even Corso to Lemonade's pretty good transitions. And then just Lemonhead, or like from uh, What's Your Name to um, Lumberjack, you're just whack. Like it's just yeah. completely different genres. It's kind of like an interlude, but like not a traditional interlude. That's what it feels like. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it, yeah, I think that's a really good way to put it. It is like an interlude, but the thing is, it's just like, it does got, it has those one-liner bars and it has those like, it just has that weird, like old Tyler energy again, where it's like saying, like he like even called it in the beginning, like he didn't even finish the first sentence, but it was like, he went back for the chorus. It's like the kind of problematic lyrics, but like nowhere near as bad as it used to be. Yeah, we were talking about it earlier that I, I'm not a big Tyler listener at all. And um, I thought I gave this one a try when he put it out because there was so much hype surrounding this album and it, I really liked it. It made me really excited to give the rest of it a try. And that's fucking sick to hear, honestly. I love that. Cause I'm, <laughs> I'm a huge Tyler fan. And so like, here's someone who doesn't listen to Tyler enjoy like, even this like, I think you're getting the best of Tyler right now. Cause you're getting Wolf era Tyler with like flower boy, Igor production value, which is awesome. That's just like the craziest shit ever. Yeah. And I mean, when you talk about production value, that's the next track for me. Hot wind blows. I mean, that beat is just, Oh my God. Like you talk, Brendan was talking about just the luxurious feel. I mean, obviously DJ drama's at his best. We're in Geneva. That's Switzerland. Uh, toes out. That song, like that, might be my favorite uh, song on the album. It's just such a beautiful beat. Um, Tyler does his thing over it. And then, you know, Lil Wayne, just a standout feature. I think this is honestly one of Lil Wayne's, like up there for Lil Wayne's best features on any song ever. I thought Lil Wayne absolutely murdered this song. That was like some of the like best Lil Wayne I've heard in so long. I need to know what Tyler does to Lil Wayne to get all these like absolutely fire verses out on his albums. Like, what is that? Three of his last four albums, he's had an absolutely killer verse from Lil Wayne. It, I don't, I don't understand that because I mean, Lil Wayne. I've listened. I'm not a huge Lil Wayne fan, but like, and the stuff that I listen to, the older stuff is always like I, I, I enjoy. The newer stuff is hit or miss. But always with Tyler, man, he just does not miss anymore. Yeah, I think Lil Wayne is de- like the definition of hit or miss because when he brings his A game like on this song, I think he adds so much and he's so entertaining to listen to. And um, 
but I, I do think uh, Tyler kind of, I mean, he definitely didn't outshine Little Wayne, but he, he kept pace with him. And this is one of the, this is, I, when I listened to this song, I realized this album was something special. And like, I don't know, like the, like I said before, the luxury of the beat, the vocal sample that's singing the hot wind blows part, so good. I, I just, I felt something inside when I heard that. And oh, man, this I don't Dude, know. What were you? What were you feeling? Oh, something. Just I, oh so I was God. so happy. I was so happy. Dude, the sample was so good. I don't blame him. So good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was like almost that one like sample was almost better than the verses, and in, in my opinion, that's just how it, it just it yeah. felt so right. It just was perfect. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just such good sampling when you have people saying it might be better than the verses. <laughs> Yeah, that thing and just, I mean, is just stuck in my head the whole time, especially yeah. um, when it like half comes in during Wayne's verse and then he goes back to rapping. That's like, that's fire. Yeah. Yeah. The transition from the sample to Wayne is just like unreal. Oh, yeah. And then next up we have uh, Massa, which I really like that song too. I mean, it really flew, it flowed well from the, the last track with like another song with really good production and very chill. Um, I felt like Tyler's like vocal performance was pretty like entertaining to some extent. Like it was good to just like flow around and listen to it. Um, what do you guys think about that song? I thought the line got too much self-respect. I wash my hands before I piss is easily one of the greatest <laughs> single bars that Tyler's put out. Like one liners, that thing is fucking amazing. <laughs> it's awesome to just hear like, this is kind of like a, uh, I don't know. It, it's awesome to just hear like these different one-liners or different things that stand out considering we've only had this album for two days. Like we're yeah. talking about this two days after we've had this album. So um, to anyone who's watching this or listening, like these things are really stand out considering we've only listened to this a few times. You know, one thing but, I, I like, Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say any other opinions on this song. Yeah, One thing I liked about this song is like uh, just how personal he got and I mean I could say that for multiple other songs on this record but with Tyler I always feel like um especially on his more recent uh, uh albums to quote DJ Khaled he's been sort of uh mysterious <laughs> um like he'll de- he'll be personal with the themes and like with the story he's telling but it's never it never goes into detail it never talks about specific things and this is the first song in the album where I felt like he really talks about something specific he talked about how he has, you know, acknowledged his growth and he, he, it took a while for him to like kind of fully form as an artist. And that's and someone who like me, who doesn't really care for like his older stuff, maybe aside from Yonkers. I mean, like, it, I think it's fine, but I think what he's doing now kind of blows it out of the water like 10 times over. So to hear him acknowledge that and to kind of be honest with himself about where he is in his career, I think that's really cool to listen to. And also the bass on this song is so nice it was like the perfect beat to just kind of uh, tell his, uh, his story on this one. Yeah, it was good. I think it was a cool moment where like you, you've, uh, I think the past like, like Igor definitely, it wasn't about Tyler, it was about a character. And like, you know, you saw that with the wig, you saw that with everything, all the like, um, everything surrounding the album, with, like imagery, concert, everything. And the Flower Boy was still like, Flower Boy was about Tyler, but it almost felt a little bit removed. Like, it almost felt like that was like, like Flower, like Flower Boy was almost someone different. But like, this is Tyler talking about, like, he's getting like, a, like almost like meta with it. Like, he's talking about Cherry Bomb. And he, like, he said multiple times he thinks Cherry Bomb is one of his best albums ever. But, you know, he's talking about why it was, like, it, it sounded so shifty. Like, it, like that's, like, it, he explains it. He talks through it a little bit he gets a little introspective, which, you know, it's pretty cool. I think that's a lot about what rap is. And he was one of the people that was a bit weird. Like he, he changed the, uh, he stretched the genre a little bit where he didn't rap about himself as much, but now he's back to rap about himself. So it's, it's like a nice refreshing change of pace for him. And then next up in the track list is Run It Up. Um, any thoughts on that one? I personally had no idea who Teaser Touchdown was, and I really enjoyed him. Um, I 
I thought it was really cool. I actually started looking into it and I saw on Twitter that I don't remember when it was, but Tyler like shared one of his songs on his Twitter last year, year before something like that. And now this guy's featured on his, on his uh, album. The one thing I really do enjoy about Tyler that I've noticed ever since he got big. And I guess it was, I, I guess it was cherry bomb. I, I like I started noticing there was smaller, like not very mainstream artists that he would put on his albums that he didn't really care about you know trying to get the big names and like some of these albums that have come out recently you see and you just see like the big features and I really like this trend of trying to put on smaller artists um artists that you just aren't normally going to hear if you're listening to only mainstream and even I mean Brock Hampton's not super mainstream but Brock Hampton is pretty big that their last album they had a couple people I had never heard of I mean so gone so flexy uh Baird I I didn't know idea who these people are and now I'm listening to them because these big like top selling artists are putting them on so like this was really cool I, I and that was like the main the big thing that I always I just thought and like even even later on in the album there's people I think it was like Daisy World and people like that that I don't know who they are and I'm listening to them now because they're putting on solid solid verses solid uh, just just solid performances on this album and I think Tisa Touch Now was cool uh, whenever he did like the little scream like they're not the scream but like the yeah, in the background of it. I was like, okay, this is hard. This is hard. I like this. <laughs> There's my singing voice for everybody listening. Yeah, I thought this one, this song was, I appreciate it because of how fun it was. Um, I feel like you don't always get that from, from Tyler uh, recently. Like he just made like a fun banger. And uh, sometimes his bangers are like the, you know, like, uh, uh, 911 where it's like it's not really like fun lyrics to listen to and it's even though it goes hard but this one was just like something you could I don't know kind of see people dancing to maybe like shouting along to with the run it ups in the background I just thought it was a you know teaser touchdown added a lot um in my opinion and yeah I just I don't know this is just one of the fun ones it was a nice little break from like heavy rap heavy rap heavy rap you know like Song right before this we talked about is uh, Massa was that was rap that was introspective rap. Next song up we got Manifesto like that's gonna be rap again. But like this was a nice little like change of pace. You know, slow it down a little bit, get some like fun vocals. Like yeah, like like uh, Brendan was saying, like you know, it's like kind of groovy. Like I, the first time I listened to this song, I was literally just like I was in my apartment and like it was on it was at midnight when it came out and I was just fucking I couldn't help but dance. Like you just wanted like groove. It's such a good album. Like to just like make you want to move and make you want to like just like like move your head get into it definitely and then biz you mentioned that next track um manifesto any thoughts on that one dude the return of domo genesis that's all i can yeah say. this is a lot of people were uh highly anticipating this song after the track list was uh released yeah fire feature from domo genesis per usual and that beat switch right in the beginning of the song was amazing. I just want to say that I love the intro. Like I laugh at it every time. <laughs> it's so funny. Well, it's, it is, we, I mean, we talked about it a little bit before and um, other Earth of Massa that like he gets more personal. Um, and I, I like this side of Tyler. I like him talking about actual, like not kind of like overarching, like, things that happen but he doesn't really tell you exactly what happens he's talking more very personal on this album and i really enjoy that and this song is another one of those that i really like and talking about was it this song that he talks about like donating to like funds and then talking about buying like a, a like a necklace or like a watch or something like that and it's like i mean that's that's super personal to talk about that stuff and just start bit, spitting bars about that I, I really enjoyed that from him i i do always like when uh you know, like Tyler's not usually someone who's uh, speaking upon stuff like this, but I, I like to hear his perspective. Um, and I think he, he gives a, a good perspective, in my opinion, because uh, when those uh, events are going on, uh, you know, I think a lot of people do have unfair expectations for um, some artists who maybe don't know how to feel about speaking out on issues such as Black Lives Matter. So, I mean, it's hard when, when you don't know which way you, you want to, you know, um, how, to, how to lead people, or if you're not comfortable in being that position, I think people put a lot of weight on a lot of people's shoulders. Like, 
and these people are just human. They, they don't have everything figured out, even though they sometimes act like they do. And he admits that on this one. And I think you see that a lot with like Kendrick Lamar too. I mean, I don't think he like said anything during the protests and stuff and people were calling him out. And I think tracks like these remind you that they are human. They, they don't always have things uh, planned out and figured out. And it, it's, you know, it's sort of comforting to hear that in my opinion. And, um, and I thought he brought his, uh, he kind of went back to his older days with the, with that intro. That was pretty funny. And, um, yeah, like he, he just got, he got personal, but he was also very entertaining and, uh, funny at the same time. Yeah. Talk about getting canceled before being canceled was a thing. Like I like, I enjoyed that more. <laughs> I was just about to talk about that. I'm like, that was, that's so real too. Like Tyler was like pre cancel culture, but also he was never able to be canceled. Yeah. Like he got canceled from a country. That's what happened to him. Where was he? <laughs> like, where was he banned from going? Was it the UK? UK. I, I, yeah. He got banned from the UK for like a few years too. Not even just like a little bit. Yeah. Um, the next track up is uh, "Sweet" slash "I Thought You Wanted to Dance," which is again one of my favorites on the album. Uh, this is gonna be my most listened to yeah okay that, that's good to hear because now it's definitely i mean i still haven't i haven't decided which tracks are my favorite but this is definitely in my top three um and for me i really love the the second half that i thought you wanted to dance i love that little switch up to like the rock steady reggae rhythm in it and it's just it's like a very igor flower boy type song and i really liked it because it's yeah. like you know it's on that um field of play with like the igor and flower boy but like it's you know, he's continuously like progressing and getting better and better. So it's like even better than it was back then. Yeah. Yeah. It's so simple, but like it matches the aesthetic of the album so well. Yeah. I was just about to say that that part where I thought you wanted to dance comes in and it plays the first thing is like the most addicting part for me. Like it's my favorite part of the album, I think. And along, along with Hot Wind Blows, I think this is my favorite track too which is crazy because I never listen to stuff this long. Like sometimes if it's longer than like six minutes, I'll be like, I don't really want to go back to it. Um, but I think at least, especially the second half, I think it, I listen to a lot of mainstream pop and I think it scratches that itch for me. It's a little, it's a little lighter. It's a little more uh, accessible for me, I think. And I just, this is the one I keep going back to. Like immediately saying, the you know like the fact that it sounds like it's two songs mixed into one like sweet i thought about dancing with you and then like the fact that it is like a 10 minute song nearly it immediately like i started thinking about like um uh sing about me i'm dying of thirst uh by kendrick and like the way you're able to make two songs into one song but and like yeah sure you know what it could have been sweet and i thought about dancing with you as two separate songs with a seamless transition he could have done that but like you know what it's better as a 10 minute song because you there there's a consistent flow and like you get consistent themes it's an extended break it's a little dance break you know chill out like talk it's like slow down have fun but also like you know like we're going to keep singing we're going to keep the music pace up we're going to keep the quality high so it's it's like pretty refreshing to hear breaks in the middle of a song like this where it's long and also just good the entire time like you were saying, like, I don't think I have any other songs that are 10 minutes in my consistent listens. But like, this is it. This is in there. It's so good. It's like, you don't think it's 10 minutes. I agree with that, man. And I, it's just, I think it's what everyone has said so far. Like, just the tr this transition is so beautiful. And like, the back end of the song mixes with the front end so much that, you know, you just have to listen to the whole thing. And you want to listen to the whole thing because it just puts the whole, um, you know, masterpiece of it together and then yeah. from there we have uh that interlude mama talk um reminded me of uh frank ocean <laughs> blonde this was i mean i don't even usually like skits most of the time but this was so funny like i just i can so clearly picture his mom just going and beating the shit out of like other kids when that mess with them and like, you can tell where Tyler gets all of his personality from. It's it's so clear in that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think it tells you a lot about him. And it's it's actually like relevant. I don't know, unlike some skits, which are sometimes really annoying. 
I think Sean especially knows my thoughts on skits. Like we talked about in the class. I absolutely love skits. I think skit culture was one of the best eras of music. I like, I immediately just always will go back to Broke Five Broke from late registration. Like that, that series of skits is what makes that album for me. Like it ties everything together, but like, this is a fun skit in the middle. Like, you know, it breaks the pace. It gets lighthearted, but also like, it's interesting because this is a skit that's relevant. And like, a lot of times skits will like break in terms of like the topic matter too, but like this will con this is continuing on him being introspective and like talking about his life, which is pretty cool because, you know, I, I haven't just started more thought into like the title of the album, Call Me Lost. I think this, like this song is one of the moments where I think it might have been during his fan, like during his life where he starts to, you know, he starts to drift, where his tastes start to change, people he surrounds himself start to change. And then Mama Talk, like, it ties into that because, yeah, that's the person who's keeping him, like, on track, but also the number one fan, number one supporter. Literally will beat up some kids because if they try to bully him. Like, it, it's cool because it's it's tying in, like, multiple themes for the album, like, and his life, it sounds like. But it's a nice little fun skit. Like, she's just yelling. <laughs> yeah, I was really curious to hear what Biz had to say about this one because he is uh, Mr. Skits. Um, but yeah, transitioning into the next song, which is Rise. Um, any thoughts on that one? I really like Daisy World's um, her, ver her yeah, verse. That I felt like it was similar to, I mean, it's not Frank Ocean, but like one of those type of features in his, on his albums. And like, it was, it was soft. It was soft. It wasn't like the hard hitters. And I, I enjoyed this one. Yeah, I thought this was one of the weirder beats on the album, honestly, like uh, the, the drum kind of the drum beat was kind of unique in a way. And I, I it took a while for me to get a sense of it. But once I once you got the rhythm down, I, I really thought that it was uh, it was really fun. It was really entertaining. And uh, yeah, it's like a it's like a nice, hopeful song that you don't really hear Tyler do too often. And then from Rise, we go into Blessed. Um, another kind of interlude type song. Thoughts on that one? I think it just goes back to the, the theme of him getting personal, talking about things that actually happened to his life. And it's just, it's, it's another just emphasis on what this album's about, really. A lot about like personal stories and how his, how he's grown, really. So, yeah. It's, I, yeah. yeah, I take this song and like other moments in the album as like, showing the idea of like having it all especially after the success of Igor like he talks about like the success of his fashion brand um success with like other collaborations like his collaboration with Converse and his success with um Camp Vlog Naw and how like his friends are healthy he's healthy like the only thing that's wrong with him is that his hair isn't growing so it's like a fun skit that's braggadocious like he, he he reminds you that he is bragging on this album but he's not like in this song especially like it's not so like it's not in your face you just like dude i'm just living a good life like i'm happy people around me are happy everything's going well and it, it's like i don't know it's interesting because you know he's setting the tone of old old tyler of like wolf tyler where everything was super edgy super depressed like he, he was like hardcore on that and now it's like no nah, like we're gonna chill out Dude, life's good. Take it easy. Go to bed. You know, like, got your toes out. <laughs> and then from uh, Blessed, we go into a track that I think a lot of people will want to hear our thoughts on. That's Juggernaut featuring Lil Uzi Vert and Pharrell Williams. So, can Uzi I and Pharrell are my favorite features on this album. They flow together so well into the song and just with each other. All right, I, I actually am about to head off, and I'm so sorry that I admit prior commitments now. Um, but I just, so I'm going to just spit out some real quick hot takes on this. Juggernaut, don't like it. Don't like the beat. I thought Uzi's verse was good, and I thought they had like solid verses, but I did not like the beat. Not my favorite track. I expected a lot more, to be honest. And I'm, I'm just going to go real hot. Wilshire, top three song on the album. Um, overall, the album. Eight out of ten, not better than Wolf and Flower Boy, better than Igor. Bam. All right. Awesome out. Ace Burley out. Love y'all. Ace Burley out. Mic drop. <laughs> Damn. 
All right. Well, um, my thoughts on Juggernaut, um, I think that I need some more time for those to my thoughts on that song to develop because I haven't gotten to listen to that one too much, but it wasn't um, really a standout for me at this time. But um, I can see why it would be a standout for others, because I think that the feature um, verses were really good. But I kind of agree with Austin, like the beat was kind of, you know, left more to be desired. I, I, I didn't think like that. More... Go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead. No, you're good. Okay. I was going to say, like, I think this is one of the more, like, rap rap songs on the album, especially on the, like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be side B. Like, on the side B of the album, like, definitely more of the more rap rap songs, but, you know, I kind of agree. I wish, I wish the, uh, I wish the beat was a little more luscious. You know, it's a little dry beat. And I think that works for a little Uzi Vert. I think it works uh, pretty damn well for him, and he knows it works well for him. But, that's not on an Uzi Vert album. I don't want to hear that on a Tyler album as much. You know, I want a little melody or I want something weird like the horns or like, you know, there's, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember the song, but there's one song that has like the hi-hat, like it sounds like the whole thing is like compressed to shit, but it's obviously intentional. Like, the hi-hat sounds grainy. Like I want something weird if I'm going to have a, like a weird beat, but this is just like a little bit of a dry weird beat for me. I, not, I agree, not my favorite, but also I'm going to keep listening to it. That might change my mind. Especially yeah. having Pharrell on it, another artist who can like work on weird beats or luscious, luxurious beats. Um, you'd kind of want something different than something that was more so tailored to Lil Uzi, who I feel like Lil Uzi could work on, you know, something else. Like he could make it work. But yeah. Yeah, I agree. And this is not the this is not really the beat that I really would have envisioned all these three uh kind of on when I had seen the feature list. So it was a bit surprising. Um, I, I don't dislike the song, but I guess whenever I think of Pharrell and Uzi, I think of Neon Guts, and that's pretty luscious. And this this one wasn't really that, so it's, it had that expectation to kind of deal with. But I don't know. I still enjoyed it. It's just not it's not going to be the top uh, on the album or anything like that. I think it does what it – it does them – it exceeds the minimum, but not more, I guess. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat there. It's probably like middle of the pack for me. Um, but it was really good to hear Pharrell rap again. I haven't heard that in a, a couple of years. And I thought he was the standout on here. Love Pharrell. Um, next up is Wilshire, which Austin is a big fan of, apparently. Um, agree or disagree? I completely agree. I think Wilshire is the best song on the album just because I mean, its production is a little bit laid back and it's kind of stagnant throughout the whole song, but it's just a very detailed song about a situation where Tyler is involved with this girl, but he, um, she's dating one of his mates or whatever, and it just all crumbles down. And I just think it's one of the best songs just based on his lyricism and his detail. Yeah, I really like it too. Um, this is another one of the really long ones. And I think it's crazy that he just raps and raps for eight minutes straight. Um, but I really like the storytelling here. And I, even though it was kind of laid back, it wasn't, the production wasn't really anything special, but I, I really like this one. I like the storyline and it was something that I kept listening to. I did. Storytelling. Uh... So this is you this is you uh yeah so i when i first heard it i was really engaged by the story and i think he does a really good job of telling that story straight through no chorus or anything um and, uh, and i wasn't really expecting that ending i, I should have probably expected it to end poorly like in a sad way but uh, it, it still surprised me like he uh, pulled the, the rug under me in those last few minutes but i will say uh i don't know I don't know if I can go back to this one and just like listen to it all the time, knowing how the story ends. Um, you know, first, first listen, obviously very engaging, but I don't think he does enough in the, the actual song structure or production wise. I don't think it's engaging enough for me to want to go back and listen to it again and again. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but we know, like we talked about Sweet, uh, I Thought You Wanted to Dance. That song is pretty long and he managed to make it uh, engaging throughout by adding new elements and you know, kind of shifting around, making things interesting as for as long as they need to be to hold your attention. And I think 
I don't know if the story on repeated listens is going to do that for me. I would have liked to see him switch something up, maybe beat switch, maybe add in like something else, some other element. I think that would be necessary for long-term listening for this album to, I mean, for the song specifically to be considered one of the better ones. And I, that just, it didn't really do that for me um, uh, on like repeated listens. So I would have liked to see something like that, but I will say, I mean, it's still good. Don't get me wrong. It's still good, but just a sort of a missed opportunity in my opinion. I think for me, like, I, I think like the fact that it's a long storytelling and the fact that it's not going to get a lot of replays is part of the reason I like the song though, is because like, it's, it's necessary for the album. It's a great effective outro to the album. No, like, I know there's another song after this, but like, it's, it's a great, like pseudo outro. It's him really getting in, like deep about like, oops. and he just tells a story. Like he hasn't told a story like this. I don't think ever. Like, he goes so in-depth, and he just, it's almost like he's talking, but, you know, like, obviously it's rap. And the fact that it's not going to get played a lot is part of the appeal, because I think, like, you're going to get the, you get the luxury of listening to the song when you listen to the album top to bottom. But you probably won't listen to, like, you know, in, in four months, you're not going to be listening to the song by itself that often. But four months, you might be like, yeah, you know what? Let me throw on Call Me If You Get Lost at top to bottom. And you listen to it, and you're like, shit, I forgot about this song. This song's good. That story's really cute and, like, really sad. And that's, like, it's a, it's a fun concept to have at the end of an album, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think the reason that I would go back to this is not because it's, like, super pleasant to listen to, but because I'm trying to look for, like, more little details that I missed the first listen through. Um, because there's, like, so much to digest with a song this long. Yeah, it's probably going to get added to my sad playlist. I'll be honest. It's pretty good. It's pretty good for that vibe. Like the ending of it, like it's, it's a big build up. I think it's just sad as shit. Yeah. I, I definitely do agree with you on the, just listening to it. It's definitely essential to the album if you listen to it all the way through. And I feel the same way about certain other songs. Like I think You by Kendrick Lamar, one of the best songs that I've ever heard. I'm not going to just pop that on when I'm driving in the car you know that doesn't make sense but that doesn't mean it's bad and I, de I definitely see where you're coming from and I think I think that is probably going to hold true for me as well but uh I mean we'll, we'll have to see since I'm still uh, kind of just listening to this uh over and over again so and then we finally made it to the last song of the album which is Safari Thoughts on that one? I thought it was a good capstone. You know, it's it's got the luxury elements. Uh, it's got like positivity. Um, it, it just kind of makes you sort of an overture for all the themes that are on the album. Like you, you just feel like, uh, you know, this is Tyler's rap album. It's his moment. He's kind of at the top of his game and he's letting everyone know. And he's having a pretty good time for the most part. Yeah, I thought it was a good, good way to close it. I think it was some of the better Tyler verses in the entire album, which is pretty cool. Like, I enjoy having that, like, be the bookend. Like, you know, you get a real nice, he has a nice Tyler verses. He he keep, he brings back all the themes that he was talking about. Like, he's talking about the pa his passport, like, I think, like, seven or eight times in this album, I swear. Like, he talks about his passport, you know, back to traveling. Um, and it's like, he, he makes it cohesive again. Because I feel like um, Wilshire thematically didn't have as much to do with the rest of the album. Because this album hasn't been a huge love album, really, aside from What's Your Name, I feel like. But, you know, like, Safari's, all right, cool. Like, you know, we're, let's wrap everything up. Let's talk about everything again. Like, it's, it, he did a really good job looping every topic back in. I really enjoyed the production on Safari as well, um, like Brendan said very luxurious, um, kept with the themes of the album, and I thought it was a perfect closer. I love how much DJ drama we get on this song. He's in this song so much, and I'm like, this is sick. He, he opened the album, and he's closing the album. Like, that's cool. Like, like, let's keep that up. I still just can't believe, like, the hate that DJ drama gets for this. Like, Dude, people aren't used to producer tags. I swear to God, that's what it is. And this is, like... I come from the like I come from the perspective of I actually really enjoyed like, you know like Michael made it I think that's pretty cool like I I don't hate that producer tag, and like um, like you know like YMCMB like era like they had some producer tags in that era, 
Um, I'm blanking super hard. Rick Ross's. Um, Maybach. And then like, Maybach music. Yeah, Maybach music. And like, I, I really like producer tag. I think producers deserve to have that. And I think people just aren't like aren't from either people that are complaining. I think they aren't from that era, or they just don't under, like appreciate that as much. They're probably like, just thinking of DJ Khaled, honestly. Like that's yeah, probably honestly, their only that's like that's probably like their only um, <laughs> that's good point. like re- examples they've had or seen of of that type of like DJ on a beat produ- producer tag type thing. Shit, that's a really good point. I like block DJ Khaled out of my mind. <laughs> he does have a real obnoxious tag <laughs> but yeah I, I think DJ drama is obnoxious too but like the, it's supposed to be it it's, works it's, it, yeah again it's ostentatious rap it's braggadocious rap cool let's get someone obnoxious like that's good and he's got a really good voice I fucking love DJ drama's voice his voice is like so good for this album and I mean it is iconic like I've listened to albums that have been you know narrated by him or you know ha, ha, not I, I feel like narrated is not the right word but where he's he's been all over it and it's cool it's it's not something that i would have expected it's so out of left field which is what tyler's always been about um what about just some like closing thoughts on the album austin gave it his rating um i can go first i think that this so far is the album of the year um still have some some time for someone else to surpass it but for right now it's my album of the year i'm thinking like an 8.5 or a 9 out of 10 it's really good to me like just it's so cohesive production is elite 10 out of 10 production um tyler's awesome over it great features um doesn't leave much to be desired for me really awesome album yeah i think album of the year uh I said this in the chat uh, when I first heard it, but it's absolutely better than everything I've heard this year so far. I would go as far as to say that it's better than everything I heard last year, honestly. Um, I don't know. I just think there's something really special about this thing. I, and this, late, this later half of the pandemic, it, I've found it really hard to like find the album that I just want. Like, ha- an album hasn't captured me, my, uh, my mind like this in a long time. And even the Brockhampton album, and I mean, you guys know how much I like Brockhampton, but like it, it still didn't feel the same this way it does. This some, this is, this is really, uh, just doing something for me right now that something ha- like that music hasn't done for me in a long time, and I'm, I've been really excited. I listened to this thing five times already, all the way through, and then listened to individual songs even more than that, and like it, it's just so good, and it's nine out of ten for me minimum, but um, you know. I don't know. I just really like the uh, the production throughout, where he's kind of giving this uh, travel across the world luxury vibes. Like this, he talks about his passport so much on this one. It makes me want to go travel to another country and listen to it. Uh, that's just how I feel. Um, I don't know. I, I I really enjoy this. If this isn't my album of the year, then something is going to have to do a lot of work to uh, beat this. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, I can finish up. Um, I think it's kind of hard to get into like experimental rap, like you guys listen to a lot sometimes. And I think the both the production and the features here make it pretty accessible to any fan, really, anyone who wants to listen to it. Um, I went from like, I'll give this a try to like, it's good, but I might, might not go back to it. And then with more listens, I've probably listened to it five times too. Um, but it's something that's probably going to be in rotation for a while. Yeah, I think this was kind of a pretty good break from Igor, not saying that that was a bad album. I really enjoyed that album, but I really like that Tyler went back to his roots of just rapping on almost every song and giving it an aesthetic as well. Um, The production on this from Tyler is all around amazing. Um, He really adds value with the feature list, and I'm feeling a like a decent eight on this one. I feel like I have the standard of I want 
about, I, I want at least around 80% of songs on an album to be good to consider a great album. And I think this is easily above that. I think this album has, it, it, it's like near 100% good songs. Like, they, like, I'm not saying like every song is amazing, but I'm saying they gotta at least be good. I think almost every song on this album is good. So like, it's, that's again, yeah, refreshing. I have not heard anything this like consistent in a while. So that's a really good plus. Um, Definitely album of the year for me so far. Um, only albums that I know that are coming out this year that might compete for me at least. Uh, Vince Staples I know is dropping two albums this year, so I I love Vince Staples too. So that's gonna be tough. Uh, but I really think the production on this is beautiful. He stepped back. He let the features do all the like. He let the feature stand out again. But he also like this is the difference is that he also made sure he stood out in a few songs which I think was awesome. Like that is something that I really wish, like I w- I've wanted for a while. Like, and also I don't think he's made a lot of like super dance, like groovy songs in a while. Like that you'd like, you know, like I, I'm planning on going to the tour for this. Like I, I've gone to the last two uh, tours that he's done. And I think this is gonna be like, you know, you're gonna mosh, you're gonna like get crazy and you're gonna have a really good time with that. And that's, that's what I like, that, you know, I wanna go to Tyler concert. That's what I wanna go to most of the time. So I think for me, uh, easy nine. I'll keep listening to it. I might bump it to a nine and a half. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly say in terms of being album of the year, I definitely think this is the one, even though Tyron, I think is very close. Yeah, but that's a discussion for another time. Um, <laughs> but another metric that I think uh, Biz will be able to relate to, that too, is this is the kind of album that I want to own on vinyl. Like, I don't, I don't know if you agree with that biz, but like to own something on vinyl, like a new release, it's gotta be something that I want to listen to start to finish. I want to have an experience when I'm listening to that album. And this is that album for me. And that's kind of hard to come by with like hip hop albums nowadays, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And I also think that the other thing I really agree with that on is I want a side A and a side B, like thematically, sonically, lyrically. And this has such a beautiful side A and side B, like um, disparity. Like it, you know, it sounds good top to bottom regardless, but like, you know, if I want to listen to something more mellowed out, I'm going to throw on side B. But if I want to listen to something like absurdly braggadocious, like hyphy and like to get like, you know, maybe like a pregame going, like, you know, to get the night started, I'm going to throw on side A because that's what that vibe is. So I completely agree. I'm definitely buying this on vinyl whenever it releases. I already pre-ordered the CD. <laughs> Me too. Did you get the, yeah. uh, the pack, whatever it was? Yeah, I bought that pack. I bought one yeah. for myself, one for my girlfriend. So I was like, you need this too. Nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I appreciate everyone coming out, sharing their opinions on the album. I think that um, we got some great takes in here. A lot of fans of Tyler. And then it was awesome to hear from Brad, who, you know, this was his first introduction to Tyler. Um, to any of the listeners, you know, check out the album. We really enjoyed it. Um, keep rolling with us for season two next week. We're going to have another special guest, a uh, musical guest, not going to announce it yet, but um, thank you guys for joining and we'll uh, see you next week.